President Trump's national security adviser John Bolton just gave a major speech in Miami on U.S. policy in Latin America. Bolton described Venezuela, Cuba and Nicaragua as a troika of tyranny, saying, quote, this triangle of terror stretching from Havana to Caracas to Managua is the cause of immense human suffering, the impetus of enormous regional instability and the genesis of a sordid cradle of communism in the Western Hemisphere. Uh, Professor Chomsky, can you respond to that? Troika of tyranny, says uh, John Bolton. Well, that, of course, uh, immediately brings to mind the uh, axis of evil uh, uh, speech of uh, George Bush back in uh, 2002, which was the uh, precursor laying the groundwork for the invasion of Iraq, uh, the worst crime of this century, uh, with uh, horrendous consequences for Iraq uh, uh, eliciting uh, ethnic uh, uh, conflicts that are tearing the region apart, uh, a major atrocity. Uh, John Bolton was behind that and uh, his new troika. Uh, I, I doubt that the U.S. will dare to do something similar, but uh, that's the, what it brings to mind. Uh, if uh, It's kind of interesting to uh, see this uh, hysterical uh, raving uh, alongside of another uh, uh, astonishing uh, propaganda campaign that uh, Bolton and his colleagues are carrying out uh, with regard to the uh, uh, caravan uh, of uh, poor and uh, miserable people uh, fleeing from uh, severe oppression, uh, violence, uh, terror, uh, extreme poverty from three countries, Honduras, mainly Honduras, secondarily Guatemala, thirdly El Salvador, not Nicaragua, incidentally, uh, three countries that have been uh, under uh, uh, harsh uh, U.S. domination uh, way back, uh, but particularly since the 1980s when Reagan's uh, terror wars uh, devastated, uh, uh, particularly El Salvador and Guatemala, secondarily Honduras. Uh, Nicaragua was attacked by Reagan, of course, but Nicaragua was the one country which had an army to defend the population. In the other countries, the army were the state terrorists backed by the United States. Uh, the most extreme a f a s s source of migrants right now is Honduras. Uh, why Honduras? Well, it was always bitterly oppressed, but in 2009, Honduras had a mildly reformist uh, president, Mel Zelaya. Uh, the uh, Honduran uh, powerful uh, rich elite couldn't tolerate that. Uh, a military coup took place, uh, expelled him from the country. It was harshly condemned all through the hemisphere with one notable exception, the United States. Uh, the Obama administration uh, refused to call it a military coup because if they had, they would have been compelled by law to uh, withdraw military funding uh, from the military regime, which was imposing a regime of brutal terror. Honduras became the murder capital of the world. Uh, uh, fraudulent election took place under the military junta, again, harshly condemned all over the hemisphere, most of the world, but not by the United States. Uh, Obama administration uh, praised Honduras for carrying out an election, moving towards democracy, and so on. Now people are fleeing from the misery and horrors for which we are responsible. And you have this incredible charade taking place, which, is, which the world is looking at with utter astonishment. Poor, miserable f people, uh, families, mothers, children, uh, fleeing from terror and repression for which we're responsible. And in reaction, uh, they're sending uh, uh, thousands of troops to the border. Uh, the troops being sent to the border outnumber the children who are fleeing. And uh, the, the, with a remarkable PR campaign, 
they're uh, frightening much of the country into uh, believing that we're just on the verge of uh, an invasion by uh, uh, you know, Middle Eastern terrorists uh, funded by George Soros, uh, so on and so forth. I mean, it's all kind of reminiscent of something that happened uh, 30 years ago. You may recall in 1985, uh, Ronald Reagan uh, strapped on his cowboy boots and called, uh, got in front of television, called a national emergency uh, because the Nicaraguan army was two days march from Harlingen, Texas, just about to overwhelm and destroy us. And it worked. I mean, uh, this spectacle is almost indescribable. Uh, even, even apart from noticing where they're coming from, the countries that we have crucially been involved in destroying. Uh, it's uh, uh, ab the ability to carry this off repeatedly is quite an amazing commentary on uh, much of the popular culture. Uh, but uh, that's, but the, tro the, the, the Troika, are just, are just like the axes of evil, are those who just don't obey U.S. orders. Uh, Colombia, for example, has the worst human rights record in the hemisphere for years, but they're not part of the troika of, uh, troika of uh, tyranny. Uh, all of this is, uh, uh, rings very familiar bells. Uh, it's, a long, uh, it's, a, it's been a long-standing uh, element of the U.S. propaganda system, on the, mostly on the far right, but not only, uh, which goes way back and uh, which is a kind of pathological feature of uh, the uh, uh, dominant political culture that should be uh, understood, uh, uh, analyzed, and dismantled. The world-renowned professor, linguist, and dissident Noam Chomsky will return with him in a moment to talk about the twin threats of climate change and nuclear war.